Hey my friends, I'm here back with Solid's lesson. I'm going to talk to you about the 0.2% offset rule. This is a little bit tricky and and it's kind of confusing. Like what the heck is the 2% offset rule? I've seen that. Don't know what it means. Okay. So if you've looked at our stress strain diagram, this is what we talked about in the last video, okay? You'll see a little area here where the the after it goes in the elastic region up here, it has yielding and if you start to really think about that, what's going on? I, I'm, I'm adding stress, and then the thing starts to deform, right? It starts to deflect without any more stress added to it. There's some weird stuff going on right here, gang. I mean, some weird stuff, okay? And this doesn't even really look like this. This really looks like this, okay? And what you have is a, an upper and a lower, this is the uh, lower proportional limit. And this is, I shouldn't be writing so little, this is the upper proportional limit. Okay, what's really going on there? A lot of books don't explain this. Uh, it's hard to tell what's going on. And what goes on there happens really fast. Okay, so I want to show you something. This is a little toy that I had, I had my guy in the machine shop make for me. It even has my name on it right there. No expense spared, right? There's 10,000 little BBs in there. Well, what they do is when I rearrange these, you can start to see the something in here. You can start to see kind of grain boundaries. All right, so what you see here are the grain boundaries. Think about these little grains as little clumps of crystalline material and when it crystallizes all of the little molecules don't get perfectly aligned and what you get are these grains if you were to look at steel under a microscope it would look something like what you're seeing there now you would be able to see these little grain boundaries well what happens is as the stress increases on our stress diagram our shear strain diagram those little grain boundaries start to slip across each other so one slips relative to another. Once it gets to this point over here where the proportional limit is, there's this slipping that goes on between those grain boundary planes, kind of a, they call it twinning um, or, or slipping. Uh, and you get this little bitty deformation. Now this all happens really, really fast and it's really hard to detect. And it's really hard to tell what's going on there because it does happen so fast. So the material is not really yielding and getting longer, it, uh, those little grain boundaries just slide across each other until they kind of run it, they run out of room to slide, right? And then they stop. And then I have to continue adding stress to get that further um, strain hardening and necking. So what happens is it's really, really hard to tell about where this yield point is versus the proportional limit. And so for the most of the time, if the book doesn't say this is the yield, this is the proportional, we assume this to be basically flat, okay? And they basically both occur at the same time. So we assume that the yield point and the proportional limit is the same thing, okay? It's the same thing. So here is sigma yield, okay? Well, and so what we do is, this happens so fast and it's so hard to observe that what we do is, we assume where the yield point is by using the 0.2% offset rule, okay? So we come in here and we say, okay, look here. We're gonna draw a line and this is gonna be at 0 0.002, right? Because 0.2%, right? Percent means multiply by 100. I gotta divide, I gotta move the decimal over two places, right? So when the deflection over here is at 0 0.002, that's the point where if I, if I make a parallel line with the uh, elastic curve over here, then I can get where that yield point is. And a lot of times that 0.2% offset rule allows us to tell whoop, where the yield point of the material is because like I said, it's very hard to determine, okay? So this is what it looks like on a ductile material. What about a material that's not a ductile material, something that's more brittle, something like aluminum? Look at that graph. Now it has a yield point. Aluminum has a yield point too, right? Here's the elastic portion. But what happens is it's really hard to tell where it's elastic and where it's not, where it's linear and where it starts to curve. 
So how do I find out where that curve happens or worth or you know, are you going to make the yield stress here or there or there or where, okay? Again, what we do is we come over here da, 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 to point zero, zero, 002 and we draw us a parallel line and we say, okay, right there, this is sigma yield for aluminum, okay? So for those materials where this is a little bit easier, right? You know you can see something happens there, right? So that's the yield stress. We don't want to go above that. But for aluminum or a material that's not a ductile material, you don't get that little flat plateau in there where the uh, yield point is very apparent. Okay, so how do I find out what that is? Well, offset that line, 0 0.002, draw you a parallel line up there, and that'll tell you exactly where that is. Now, some industries, for instance, the uh, aircraft industry, right? Well, this is an assumed point. Well, what happens if I'm, I have an airplane and, I, and, it, and it's, you know, it's permanently deforming there if I'm getting closer to that? So to increase the, the, the safety, right, the factor of safety of the whole thing, what they might use is a 0 .001 or a 0.1% offset rule, okay? So for those kind of industries, they may use something a little bit tighter and say, okay, right here, here is the, the yield point that we're going to use. Okay, we're not going to use that yield point, we're going to use this one. And that way it's a little bit safer and uh, we prevent something from happening. Okay, so I hope that kind of explains to you what the 0.2% offset rule is and what it means. And I hope it helps and I'll see you on the next video.